what are the tests that we need to do in cases of facial nerve paralysis? We have the topognostic tests and the electrodiagnostic tests. So what is the importance or what are the various ways of doing these tests? When we talk about topognostic tests, we are basically looking at the site of injury. So what are the various sites that a facial nerve can be injured? So the various branches of the facial nerve, we have the greater superficial petrosal nerve. We have the nerve to stapedius. We have the corda tympani nerve. And then eventually we have the muscular branches. So how do you detect injury to any one of these nerves? When you talk about the greater superficial petrosal nerve, it supplies the lacrimal and the submandibular gland. So you can assess it by doing a submandibular salivary flow test or if in case of lacrimal glands, you can do a Schirmer's test. Now to stapedius, you can detect by doing a tympanometry that is the stapedial reflex and then corda tympani, you can check for the taste sensation by doing a electrogastometry. As far as the muscular branch injury is concerned, that is once it comes out of the stylomastoid foramen, you need to do electrodiagnostic tests. There are two important tests that you need to do. One is electroneuronography and the other one is electromyography. Electromyography detects the muscular activity in cases of long term paralysis, whereas electroneuronography tests the ability of the nerve to regenerate by itself. So these are the two tests that you need to remember. As far as Bell's palsy is concerned, it is an acute facial nerve paralysis of idiopathic onset. And when you talk about treatment in cases of Bell's paralysis, it is usually high dose steroids for a period of 14 days. So what are the features of facial nerve paralysis? You can see absence of wrinkling of the forehead, incomplete eye closure, absence of a nasolabial fold, inability to blow the cheeks and deviation of angle of the mouth to the opposite side. 